Hello, right, welcome to my second video. Uh, this is where we're going to be finishing off the base drawing. Uh, I've got a number of tools I'm going to use to do this now. Uh, let me just pull my picture up. There we go. Uh, preparation is everything. Uh -huh. Right, so this is a tortillon. Uh, it's like a bit of rolled up paper. Uh, quite useful tools. Uh, I've got three sizes here. They could be packs of three, so you get all three sizes. Uh, and these are great for pushing the pastel into the paper. And then I have these wonderful little things here, which are color shapers. Uh, I'm gonna use both of these on this drawing. Uh, and this will give you a, a, a good idea of different techniques you can use to flatten this out initially uh, as part of the underpainting. So first of all, you can see where I've started a little bit here. I'm just gonna push the pastel into the paper. It takes away that grainy look. And just adds a bit of depth. I'm going to be doing this across the whole thing. Gently on those edges where the darkness is there. Because while I want to create a slight blur, I don't want it to take away from those areas where it's necessary to have that colour there. And muddy my drawing. Which really well with the darks, as you can tell. And don't be afraid just to where those edges are, and you want to keep a bit of a, a flow going. Don't be afraid to just push it in that direction. As you can see, it just adds a bit of a shape to it there. Against these edges here, we want to keep a nice light edge there. So you can see I'm even doing this in the direction of the hair. <laughs> I don't know how clear this is on camera right now, but as an undertone, you can almost see very faint hairs that's what we're going to call them because that's what they're meant to be just slightly different tones this way in the underpainting doesn't matter at this point whether it's perfect because as per the first uh, video we are just trying to create the rough ready for the detail later. And some of these areas will be darkened up and some of them will be lightened up. And we do that with adding what will appear to be small strands. As you're doing this, you might find there's a couple of areas where you want to add a bit more color. use the right colour, of course. Doo, doo, doo. Where was I? Yeah. I'm not sure that's the right colour either. I don't know what I've done with that if it's not there. Hmm. We're going to hunt in a second. I think my children have been here today and messed with my pencils. The joys of being a dad. Seven children I've got. So sometimes keeping them out of the things you don't want them to touch is not easy. The bigger ones, our eldest is 21, and our youngest is four. So I think the oldest ones tend to keep out. They know what's good for them. Little ones just find the whole thing fascinating. You see it here where there's a few more light areas, how I'm... Pulling this down. <laughs> Can you see the effect this is having? What 
look perhaps very much like scribble on the paper on the pastel mat it's now starting to have a vague resemblance of hair don't be afraid to push in quite hard in some of these areas to get that blend in oh that's made my hand ache a little bit must practice this technique a bit more often It just creates this slightly smoother look down in these dark shades here. I could really do with finding that pencil. Let me have a look here. Do, do, do. Oh, those kids. Actually, right, for a minute there, like, like, like the black, uh, and it's not, so that's the one I want. messenger on there. Right. Do, do, do. There we go. You can see that nice sort of hair forming. Got a bit of an edge there. If you want to have a little bit more refined. So you can probably see the effect that's had there already. Um, we don't really want these to be bright white. Uh, they certainly weren't bright white when we finished. But it gives you again a good indicator. Of what we want to achieve. So, whoops, there we go. I'll add some more in this area here, I think, because We've got a few nice lights in there, but we've also got a few nice darks as well. We want some of that in there to go over afterwards. going in the direction of the hair that you want to want to show off later. Just try and keep see where you can see those sort of fine hairs there. You want to try and keep that, that look in here. Keep a fairly smooth edge on it because See how we're just building up a little bit of a layer, adding 
make some tiny bits of detail, but not so much that we can't do anything about it afterwards. Oh, I think that'll have a bit of a shadow in there. Maybe wrong. I'm going to worry about the shading and various areas about that afterwards because it's not part of this yet. The details not at least. And here, you've got to be a little bit careful because you want the black to spread. That's a good idea. Your hand moves in a certain motion. Um, so when you're trying to get the fur in the right direction, you can go like that, which works in some cases, you'll see me do it. Um, but it also helps just to use your hand in the right way as well. It's a more natural motion. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see how this pulls the pastel off the paper a little bit. Uh, in fact, I think I keep swapping ends on this, and I shouldn't do really uh, for lights and darks, but it doesn't matter too much. You can see here already we have this almost fur like quality. Which when we draw a puppy is pretty much the idea we want to achieve. And I've not even started to add any details, any depth, any highlights. This area here isn't really hair, so I'm not going to try and do that in quite the same way. I just want to create this sort of fairly smooth gradient and you can see on the eye of the dog, I have a slightly light rim. It's very faint across the edge there. And I have that here now, it's very, very faint. And just where I didn't draw, right up to the edge of that line, is where that line starts to really come into effect. It's a slight, slight glint of it. And it's those little slight glints that make the difference between realism and not so realism. Realism isn't the uh, be all and end all of any picture necessarily. Technical skills are fantastic, but at the same time, creativity is king. That depends on which uh, world you come from. In the business world, they say cash is king. Uh, and I'm quite a big fan of that saying too with my business. Yeah, uh, you can see there, and then we've got this really nice fur effect. We have this scribbly effect here that probably looks a bit messy to a lot of people. Uh, but when we start to put this in for the base layer, suddenly we've got some nice fur patterns that we can work to, that we can highlight, that we can bring onwards and on afterwards. So, and we'll continue now on these edges. I don't know if you can hear all that squeaking and crunching noise, that's my children not being quite as good as they should be. Especially at this time of night. So, I may have to pause the video just for a few seconds. And go and sort out some naughty children. Won't that be fun? Again here, I've got a lot of little hairs coming across here. But one of the things about hair is that there are millions of them, as you probably know. Millions of hairs, and I don't know if you've ever tried drawing, you know. 20 million strands of hair, but it's uh, no easy task. Uh, so far better to give the illusion of hair, which is dealt with by building layers, by creating this effect here, looks like hair, 
not a single hair. Right, let's go back up here again. There's an area here, actually I think this might be a little bit bigger, but it's very similar to that area under the eye. Oops, there we go. Let's have it, make sure I've got the right end this time so I don't start spreading white everywhere I don't want it. just to make sure you are doing what you want to be doing and the hairs on this part of the face do tend to go in a lot of different directions so again we'll try to get the right impressions don't worry too much if you think it's not perfect that's okay nothing in nature is as perfect as you think it is The difference would be if the dog got a great big patch here and you don't draw it in, of course. People want to have a, an image of their, their pet that is fairly like their pet. And if you can't manage that, you probably shouldn't be doing it. There we go. Let's look at the difference that's made. And to my mind, I've not really started drawing it yet. This is just some of the base coats. What's happening here is you're picking up some of the uh, ink on here and you're spreading it a bit unevenly, a bit messily, but because you're doing it in the right directions, it's adding rather than destroying the drawing. Uh, some areas here where we don't want more dark there, it needs to be more light going this way. So I'll come to that in a few seconds. And show you how I do the different the bit there. De -de -de. I might need to add a little more dark in here, but I don't think I will. Tortolon picks up a, a good chunk of it. It also pushes the pastel down into the layers a bit better. So this is going to come close look at this now. This is coming over like this. And of course it will build up in a lot of different layers shortly. Don't worry too much if you haven't got a seamless blend here. It doesn't matter yet. Because we are just doing base layers in the rough direction. Sorry about this because I'm forever forgetting to put these on and this will stop me smudging it even more which I don't really want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, some areas here. Yeah, I've just not got enough on my tortilla really to do what I do there. I just want to pull that a little bit over there, a little bit down here. But without that bit of depth, it's 
not going to be right either. So don't be afraid to come while you're drawing. Have a look, and if you think, hang on a minute, that's not going to be. There's a dark patch there. Put it in. No harm done. There we go. And if you get things stuck under your mat, it tends to roll the crayons around. All good fun. What I need, as you can probably tell here, this dark comes up. And it sort of spreads a bit more across. And as you notice these bits, just, just, just draw them on. Draw them on, roughly like that. And then carry on with your tortoise on. Pulling it in, pulling it out of it. Getting that darker, bit of shade in there. Uh, and I'm gonna put a little spot of black in there, just to pull that a bit. Across there. There we go. I should have a quick look and make sure we are recording. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, so we'll carry on. Right. There we go. What a difference that's made. Just look at that side to that side. Quite surprising. Uh, really, being left-handed, the sensible thing would have been to start here and work backwards to reveal the drawing as I'm going. Uh, I haven't done that. Uh, in my eagerness to bring this drawing to life. So, hard look. I'm gonna cover this part up and just draw this in very quickly over here. Again, I quite enjoy doing these tutorials where you can Really follow along. I could also do with lifting some of this off here. But <laughs> this hair is going down quite a bit. I'm a little bit careful not to pick up any of the white on there, but it doesn't matter too much because I can bring the brown in when I find where I put it. Mm -hmm. Ideally, uh, you need a bit of sandpaper with you, proper sandpaper I mean, uh, because then you can rub the end of this off on the sandpaper and that keeps the end cleaner. I've got all sorts of little things from Putting in a pencil sharpener, which trust me doesn't work. Even in an electrical one. Oh, and there we go. That's the children finally getting uh, their notice call. Do, 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 do. Here, I'm going to do something slightly different in these little fine edges. But not right this second. Do you see how this sort of slight blur is being carried across by the talk to one? That's ideal. Just blurring it in there. I'll carry on with that technique a bit later on. Once I've decided what to do with the background, because I haven't really decided yet. I'm toying with the idea. I'll put a nice sky in, but I haven't quite concluded that decision. Hmm. Probably done this area. 
a little better. There's going to be some nice lights in there. <laughs> I, feel, I don't want to go too mad here, but I think that should come down a bit more there. I need some of those lighter browns as well in this area. Just to remap in. Got a little bit of carried away with my dark there, I think. We'll add a bit more depth. Do, 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 do. There we go, and then again, I'm just gonna blend that back in. At the moment, I want the hint of the colours, not the real colours standing out. Except before I could do with a bit more light across here. That's what this is all about, this part. I'm only just doing it very lightly. I'm pulling probably as much off as I'm putting on. There we go. I'm going to refine this edge later on. Um, as you've heard me say a number of times now, I don't want to do too much bit now. Uh, let me think. for which side of your tutorial I'm using. If you've got that white there, you need to be very careful. I'm spreading a bit of grey into this, but I believe, and we'll soon find out, that that will actually serve to enhance it. I'll show you something I do at the moment with the, uh, the colour shifters towards the end of this. To give some even finer definition to hair that's not really there. I don't know, I've got a few sort of quite, quite hard pressed pencil marks in there which I don't really want at this point so I'm just trying to really push them away a little bit blend them into their surroundings somewhat that white just serves to add a little bit of a shade over that and then this here is going down very much like this and curving gradually Doo -doo. and just do that there pulls a little bit in because there's always going to be a good overlap in some of these spots right. now again here it doesn't look like I've done this in quite the same way, which is a shame. I might just do this. We'll see what happens. There we go. This may work, and it may not, but it should be okay. Again, we don't want a great big bright line there. We just want that very small bit there now take attention you need to make sure you're going as i said before in the direction of the hair when it gets to the hair let's just 
roughly, pull this in a bit here. And we're just trying to get the illusion of some wispy hair parts. There we go, right then. So that's the, the, the darker area is done for the most part. Uh, I've got to carry on in a few of these spots. And again, just keep pulling your pencil, the tortillon, or your colour shape it, in the direction that you want the hairs to go, to help add to that illusion. And just pull a bit of ink across first, ink, a bit of pastel, I don't use ink anymore, it's been a long time since I've used inks, maybe one for a future tutorial. The fun thing about getting back into that after being off it for a long time, is remembering it all, and as you do it, the more you do, the more you remember, and the techniques you pick back up. And it's quite interesting. I must be going a bit in the wrong direction there, but that's okay. And again, I'm just pulling it a little bit over the edge because we want to soften those edges where those hairs are. A little. And we bring them all back a bit later. That's the plan. This hair is quite light, so the depth at the moment is the darkest it's ever going to be there, I expect. The fun part will be doing that nose, because the nose has got a hell of a pattern to it, uh, which with a pencil is quite easy to um, create. If that's the right way to describe that particular pattern. Uh, with pastels, I don't know yet, we'll soon find out. I'm trying to rough out again some of the pencil marks so that we've not got anything too, too obvious. This will blend in to the nose afterwards, as per the reference. It's a shame you can't see the reference clearly, but I can there. Uh, what I might do is put a reference link to the Pixabay where I found it, because I think it's good fun when you're doing these sort of things to be able to go along with it. Um, if I do tutorials, just, just to make this little point for everybody, uh, if I do tutorials, what I don't like to do is copy the same image. I might pick the same animal, the same species, but I don't pick the same image because that way, when I've done it, A, it's a drawing which has used the same techniques, uh, but it's also mine. I haven't copied somebody else's work as such. I've drawn my own version of a particular animal, um, but I've used the tutorial as a guide. Now, I don't mind if you want to copy the same picture, that's why I'll put the reference in the links. Uh, it's just a thought. That's how my mind thinks. Entirely up to you guys how you want to do your own drawings. And this one, let's be honest, is quite a cute little puppy. So who could blame you if you wanted to do it? <laughs> You can see as I'm doing this, I'm still pulling it in the same direction. Just adding these few bits of dark in here. You can see how this sort of blurs it. it creates this false illusion of hair. I 
we're going to do the same with the white areas in a minute, but not with this, possibly, because it's getting a bit mucky now. And I don't have any sandpaper. And therefore, I won't be following my own advice on that particular subject just now. Again, remember to keep looking at your reference pictures because this comes down this way a little bit here. some finer sort of spots here that we want to make sure we do drag down a bit more for later Whoop, there we go should stop that down perhaps uh, but if you do you can't move it around so easily so I tend to work with it just as it is If this gets a bit mucky here, it doesn't matter so much because part of the illusion of hair is this slight blur, this slight overlap that you get. And then this dark down here isn't hair. That's okay. Putting that little bit of a blur gives you a good edge later for uh, handling the wisps. Probably I should go a bit darker down here. I don't like to do it always with. So, certainly not with the wrong brown that I happen to be holding in my hand. I don't like doing it with black is what we're gonna say. Uh, but having not decided on the complete background yet, I'm gonna just put it in just enough to darken it and hopefully be able to add some color over it afterwards. All around these edges here, you can see I'm just gonna soften it a little bit. Soften, soften, soften. It's easy to miss bits and to be honest with you I'm not convinced it really matters if you do miss the odd part because you're going to be working on this for a while um, and these little bits are always going to crop up. Some people like doing it with their fingers I don't because then you put your fingers all over it and I'll make enough mess without having to do that. So. What I've got there is the darks mapped in, uh, and I want to map in the um, the whites, but unfortunately I've dirtied both sides of my tortillon, so that's not much use anymore. Uh, I probably do have one with some whites on, but I'm going to use a fresh one for now, this is quite hard. Uh, I'm not actually so keen on this particular brand, uh, it's from Hobbycraft. So ten times the price it should be, and half as effective. Nothing changes. So here... This will seem a bit odd what I'm going to do now, uh, because I'm really knocking a lot of this white off. 
But what I'm doing is I'm creating the fur that goes underneath the white fur, if that makes sense. So when you're looking at it before, you think, oh, that's the white fur. Trust me, that's just the undercoat. The bits on the puppy you don't really see. And I'll give you a very quick demonstration towards the end of this as to what this does. Again, you'll see, I'm working the tortillon in the direction of the hairs, the way I want them to go. And hopefully you can see a little bit about how this creates that sort of undercoat. These are the darker hairs that lie under the surface hairs. I'll just soften that a little bit more there perhaps afterwards. So, I'm a little bit careful here because I don't want to get my end too dirty at this point. I might just work, work a little bit more on these wipes first. Doesn't matter if you get a little bit of brown on them, but you don't want to create that horrible dirty look with smudges, which I'm going to do again now I'm moving across my drawing. I think there are hard fast people that are purists uh, and will be, oh, you have to use your, your bit of paper, you can't make smudges, you can't do this, you can't, you know, a little rubbish, we all do it. little smooth gradient there. Now as you may recall I don't have a, a particular reference for this area so I'm guessing really based on past experience where this hair is going and I may be guessing wrong. So what? Not completely wrong though, because this is the middle of the nose and it's going back like this through the middle of the head. And it's these little hairs at the side that sort of veer off. I need to put a bit more hair, a bit more white in there, I think. Um, but notwithstanding, there's a darker patch in the middle of here somewhere. Be afraid to put some of these hairs in. Not going to hurt. There we go. Need a bit more there because this has got quite a bit of light and dark areas, and afterwards we'll be having quite a lot of. Uh, streaks in the fine details how I do this now, carefully, I'm softening back, at least in theory, the other way. And we've got this lovely furry gap, these lovely layers of under fur. 
that will help serve the rest of the drawing later on. <sighs> I'm itching to do those eyes. One of the things I usually do when I start a drawing is add the eyes in. Uh, I like to do it quite early on. Uh, but in this particular case, it's serving a purpose. Doo -doo -doo. And these eyes are quite mucky and grey. And just giving it this rough tone here, daft as it sounds, helps create a real look. Because very aware is any white really white? Uh, and in fact, I tend to use a mixture of things really. The colours of the surrounding flesh on things like uh, teeth uh, and also the whites of eyes. Uh, because quite often you find, I used a bit of a dirty patch there, but um, you find that the, the, the white of the eyes and the white of the teeth and so on and so forth will reflect onto. Oh, sorry, I think the surrounding colours will reflect onto the white. Dee, dee, dee. I'm sort of fairly in the zone here, so if I waffle and I make no sense, bear with me. I'm sure you've all been there. Right. Of slightly lighter colours in there, which I'll bring down afterwards. We think when I decide exactly what I'm going to do. So, there we've got uh, pretty much the base drawing done. Um, I may, when I find the right tortilla, just add some slightly bit more. It's amazing. You want to get rid of this sort of chalky look if you can. I don't like it. Uh, I like it on some people's pictures. I just don't like it on mine. Uh, it comes from years ago, I used to do a lot of airbrush work. And of course you don't get this chalky effect really. On that medium. And if you wanted to, I'm sure it'd be quite challenging. If you see me not using my piece of paper to protect the rest of my work, please show me. Because I don't want to wreck it, especially not when I'm showing other people how to do it. Right, have a quick gander at that. I'll have a quick sip of my cup of coffee. Oh. I've been here for a four kilometre walk tonight up, up a big hill. Uh, quite nice. Uh, one of the local landmarks called the Reekin. Uh, I'd like to say I went up there because I'm a health freak, but I didn't. I went up there because my wife said I'm getting fat. And she thinks sitting on my butt drawing isn't going to help with that. Bless her. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do some of these bits yet, but... Especially not in blacks. So we've got the basic undertone there of the entire animal. Uh, we've got the mid-tones which I haven't drawn in, in all cases, uh, because there are various degrees of yellows and browns. Uh, you could, if you want to, just add a few in. Doesn't hurt to put these in. Satisfy yourself that you're getting closer. I'm not convinced I'm even using the right one here, but this is just to show you. It is just a demonstration. You 
can see how this works later on. I don't want to build too many layers up here because if I do, I have no way to put the extra pastel on afterwards. And that would be a disaster. Right, okay. Okay, it's nice. Rough. And got some quite bright white highlights going down here afterwards. Uh, really, I need to think about a couple of things now. Um, we're going to want to colour the eyes, and we're going to want to colour the nose, and we're going to want to add some colour to the white fur, the brown, to some degree you can get away with because you can add some colour in when you do your highlights later on. Um, the question we need to consider is what are we going to do in this area here? Are we going to leave it blank? In which case you can get away with doing whatever you fancy colour wise. But if you want to add a sky uh, and make it look more like a, a, a puppy, in this case outdoors, um, you will need to think about the colour of the sky and how that interacts with your subject. So blue sky up here will have a blue tint on the eyes, will have a bit of a blue tint on the fur. I'm not talking about doing a bright royal blue, that won't work. Um, it is a hint in all cases, uh, perhaps a little bit more than a hint in the actual eyes themselves. Uh, the reference photo I'm using is quite interesting. It's got a lovely detail in the eye, uh, but I don't know if you can see this. When you zoom in closely, can you see that on the camera there? I think so, maybe. Oh, well. I'll move it across. Uh, it appears to be somebody sitting on the floor uh, with a camera in front of them, waiting patiently for the dog to stay still. So we don't really want to draw that reflection in the middle of this eye. <laughs> Something to think about. Right. Uh, we'll add in some highlights here and here later on uh, and really bring that out. But I think that brings me to the end of the base drawing. Yeah, there's a few bits I could refine, there's a few bits I could change, uh, and I can keep, you know, look with, any, with any drawing, until it's finished, you should be able to keep looking at it and going, oh, I want to do this, and oh, I want to do that, and oh, I should do this. Yeah, I can, if you really want to. Boy yourself to peers. You know. Or oh, you can get to a point to say, right, That's enough of the underdrawing. It's good enough. It's got the basics that I need. Oop. You'll always spot little bits. There's no doubt about that. I think even the most professional artists, of which I don't consider myself one, uh, the most professional artists carry on working until they're done. You know, and the drawing isn't completed until you say it is. Yeah. At the same time, you can overwork something. You can get a really good image that isn't really finished to the same fine details but there we go you see these pencil marks here nothing in nature has a line yeah okay except hair but really close up that doesn't have a line either so just try and keep solid lines away but that's really part of the detail for later on. That gives you an idea of what, of what I consider to be the underpainting um, for the most part. Uh, I could map in the darks here. Um, and the only reason I'm not going to is because I need to decide really, <sighs> do I want to put in a nice bright blue sky or do I want to just leave the puppy like that and think it's effective? I, I, I've done a few recently and I put some backgrounds on that were very straightforward, basic backgrounds. And I think it's really brought the, the character of the image to life. Uh, the problem with this is the bright day background is going to mean I've got to draw these darn paws in. And uh, that one's okay. <clears throat> but the one on this side is not entirely clear for the most part. <clears throat> uh, so this side, these two paws, in a way I'd like to lose them. <laughs> Hindsight says I should have drawn the whole face bigger. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. And sometimes it's just a little bit too late. <laughs> there we go. Let's just put that coming up there a little bit. See how this um, very light press makes it look a bit more like hair. 
Maybe no, it's not. It's very easy to carry on, as you can probably tell, uh, adding all these extra little bits in. Uh, and I'm going to do that on the next video, uh, but for now I'm going to pause this uh, and I'll upload it so you can uh, perhaps have a make a start on your own. I may just start putting a bit of darker shade on here. This is a black. Trust me, I don't necessarily think putting black on a drawing is always a good thing. But sometimes it works, especially with darker tones where you just can't pull it out any other way. Take a little careful note as you're doing it as to where those blacks really are as well. There are areas that you don't want to shade, really. You can see how this has got a very small light streak. So you've got this sort of darker patch down the nose there and that comes a bit down like that I'm going to put this in I put this in on the video why not you'll notice on here I'm using a slightly different motion of circles and the circles on this paper um, help create the texture of a dog's nose. <laughs> it would be really, really helpful if I could see this image clearly, but I can't. But I have a bit of experience drawing these things, so I know roughly how this should look and how I want it to look. You can see there some of the brown that I put on there area is just showing through very, very gently, which is what we want. If you notice my pencil isn't sharp at all here now. I don't want it to be. I'm trying to create this sort of slightly. I'm trying to get a little bit too curly here. I'll lose that a little bit. It'll be a little bit mixed here. And you want it to go all the way across lightly in places because you can add some colour to this based on your choice of background later. There we go. Various more motions. Pick up the texture of the uh, the pasta right here carefully. I if you saw what I just did then, I very accidentally dragged this across the paper, which left a slight streak there. Now fortunately, as it happens, I need an area here that is just slightly darker. So I could have got away telling you that was done on purpose. But it wasn't. It's very, very easy to do. Again, I don't want to go too mad with this at the moment because it's got a lot of work to do afterwards. I've already put quite a lot of black into this um, area here as well, which actually might do being a little bit bigger. Again, always check your reference because if you've got this on a screen in front of you that's like this and you try to try to copy that onto here, you might well find you draw a nose that's bigger than your dog's head. Uh, and that shouldn't really be the case. Not for realism, I like if you're drawing a fantasy dog, that doesn't need to look right. Not so good to please your customer. Just gonna add a slight. I'm gonna take away this um, ob 
obvious paper look. I'm just trying to keep this rough down here. Let's keep that texture there. We want that afterwards to blend into the fur just because of the way it works. <laughs> you have various sort of patches across the, the nose that will show up in different ways or different colours and, and colours are a big thing as you can probably guess. is never going to look right straight away because of the simple fact that a dog doesn't have a really brown nose but it does have a slightly brown nose there'll be a bit of greys, a bit of greens I think perhaps in this afterwards so what you could do here is you could go back in with your till till on and do all that but actually, I think we want to create that texture. So I'm going to leave that for the time being. Um, with the exception, I'm just going to pull it a little bit around these parts of the nose. Take the blend. I don't know if I've got the longer tortil on here, but I should really have used that one, shouldn't I? But it's it, okay. This is where I want to go, just here. And I said about trying to blend it very slightly. So I don't want to blend too much at this point. I don't want to take away that texture from the nose there. small movements here just to give that a bit of a blend because you don't want big streaks around this area uh, and you don't really need any all around there I don't think uh, and then back down here I think we're gonna have the same thing it's not very clear on the uh, the image there but we know this is pretty much in shadow and it's going to be pretty dark. So even though afterwards I'm probably going to put some other dark shades in. I just want to be a bit more sure about this edge before I start adding tons of detail later. Do, do, do. really easy to start trying to add in all the details. Be careful when you blow like that by the way because it's very very easy to spit on it and trust me it's sometimes hard to, to clean up. So hopefully you've got an idea of what I've done there to create this underpainting. Uh, it's quite effective, it works well. It stops this rough look you see on these edges remember these edges aren't actually white or well, they won't be so just 
finish these white areas off, blending them down just to give that hint of brightness that we'll see later. Just makes those highlights a bit easier to put in. It's a little muddy, but that'll transpire afterwards to look like the fur. There we go. Probably do a bit more here. Again, we, don't, we want to avoid that chalky bit. And there's going to be some areas where I've coloured it in while I've been yapping. And then forgotten. I'm trying to do this so you can still see what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, there's your basic undertone. You've got a, a lot of a nice sort of fur to work on with your drawing. You got hopefully okay. Well, I can't actually see what you can see on the camera, um, but it gives you a nice background now to work on to start adding in highlights around here, adding in some nice depth. We're going to draw the eyes in probably in the next part of the tutorial. I'll get that done before I do anything else because I think well I like to see the creatures I'm drawing and look like I'm looking into their eyes. Then we'll be adding some fine detail into the hairs down here, bringing them all in, going this way um, with some of the depth, and then we'll go that way. I'll show you how to uh, bring those finer hairs in, in all those different areas. We need a bit of a, a lighter patch here, another light one here, some more depth across these bits. But you've got there your basic undertone. It's a really, really effective way of doing it. it gives you a real good base to work on. Hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. I'm going to go and have a nice cup of coffee and a few minutes break uh, and get this video uploaded so you can have a look at it and start doing some of your own stuff. I'll speak to you soon.